So in this week's Phantom Cave review, we're going to be having a look at Giant Size Phantom number 16. And I know, I know, it's been a long time coming for this magazine. I've been trying to get it in my reading schedule. I've been trying to read it for like the last how many months? Oh, I don't know. Um, but we've got a couple of good stories to do with uh, the Phantom... The Phantom Ranger, the Raven, Sir Falcon, and the Panther. Now, the cover art for this one is done by Glenn Lubston. And, of course, I interviewed him last year. And you can go check it out up here. So, let's get into it. So the first story is the Phantom Adventure in the Adventure. It's basically, it's the Himalayas story. Um, I've had a look at this story a few times on this channel and I've already read this story. So basically the Phantom has to save Diana and Di have to save everyone these days. Phantom gets caught out by these lone attackers Phantom wins. Diana, I think, nearly gets married or something like that in this story. Something like that. Um, what else we got here? And, uh, well, I've obviously, I actually in my collection, I have the full unedited, uncensored comic of this story, a full of all that in my collection. So I've already read this story. I've already read it. And this story, obviously, it was one of the first ever published phantom stories, one of the first ever published phantom stories in the newspaper. And when I first read it, when I first read it, um, like from the longer form, the um, unedited, uncensored um, one, well, I thought it was very good. I thought it was very good. And I I really, I hadn't really seen a comic that had been so edited and so censored so much to make it believe that they've taken panels out of it or they've taken um, artwork panels or any bits of the key story that should be in there. Um, the next comic we have with us, Right now is the Panther, number 14, featuring the Battle of the South Seas. Now, I, with this um, Panther stories, with the Phantom Ranger, Catman, Planet Man, all those stories, all those characters now, that nowadays you don't actually see in, like you don't even actually see in any movies, you don't see in any TV shows and all that sort of stuff. But now we have them in giant size Phantom comics and we're actually allowed to basically enjoy the old stories, enjoy what we've been reading in the last couple of years because this, this series, it started back in 2017. So it's a pretty, I've got all the series of this one and also the last couple, well, also the other comics that started in 2017, new series of the Phantom was obviously the Phantom World special. I've got all the series of that and Kid Phantom, which is just pretty good. Uh, on to the Panther story though. Um, the Panther nearly, yeah, he nearly dies in this comic. He nearly dies in this comic, unfortunately, but he survives. He he founds, finds out that there's a secret operation, that there's that a... It's basically a officer in the ranks of their own has stolen the blueprints to a very, a very um, revolutionary, um, a revolutionary plane that they're trying to build. And the Panther obviously gets away from them. He gets saved by Lana of from the Lohana 
Lohona Island and half the village goes up in smoke. Um, the panther then goes and saves them but doesn't because half the, che- half the uh, village is gone. Well, most of their village is gone. He then goes on a boat. They basically destroy the island and the big ship comes in the water and finishes them off. Now, I actually, I quite like how the Panther, the Phantom Ranger, the Catman, um, Plant Man and the Raven actually have like a good backstory to back up their obviously their story and their character and all that sort of stuff. So I, I quite like how the Phantom Ranger, the Sir Falcon, in this circumf- Sir Falcon story, oh, I'll get to it, but I did not like it. It was average, I reckon. So the Phantom Ranger, he saves a kid from getting trampled by bulls um, or cattle as you would like to call them. Um, the family is then getting barraged by these crooks. The Phantom Ranger basically makes sure that the family in the town gets a sheriff. The F- F- Phantom Ranger gets shot three times while going to do groceries. Uh, Phantom Ranger has a shootout with an old person and gets shot three times. That scares the living daylights out of people in this comic. And then the Phantom Ranger wins. And goes back, nearly dies from it. But the father of the kid that nearly got killed... Um, saves the day and we're all good. Now the Sir Falcon story. Now let me get into this. It's Sir Falcon number twenty-five. I'm going to get into this story. I I just I just I was reading it right. I was reading the story. You get back up to the later parts of the story. It just it resembles me in frustration of. It just been, it looked like it'd been rushed. Basically, it's looked like, like not in the first part of the story, it looked like it was going to be an okay story, okay artwork and all that sort of stuff. But um, when you get to the neck, the middle and the last part of the story, oh, it just looks rushed. I'll show you what I'm talking about it soon. It's coming up in a few pages. Here we go. Here we go. So look at the artwork. It's if it was done, well, obviously because this is an old story, they can do what they want to do with it, but just it's just frustrating because you look at the story, you think that it's going to be a good story, and then you get to the later parts of the story, you get the later part of the, of the artwork panels, and you just see this. This is just, it looks rushed. It looks like someone's basically gone in with an ink and pencil. And see, so this is my frustration. This is my, it's, it's just because it feels like it's an average story, and it's just frustrating because... If you see a story, you you got to like it, but the artwork needs to be conciding with the story. It needs to be in with the story, and it needs to be um, so it needs to be in with the story. It needs to combat. It needs to be with the story. And I just I I just thought the story was average. The story, the artwork, it looked like it. Well, the story. Not in particular, but the artwork looked very rushed. It just, it just looks rushed because there's no shading. There's no, um, 
There's no detail in it. It just looks, just for me, it looks rushed. And I was actually, I was talking to a guy on Instagram yesterday when I obviously wrote this book. And um, what he said about this story, um, he said that it he very much liked it. Well, he can, yeah, he very much liked it. And me, I just think it's average and the artwork is rushed now coming into my absolute one of my absolute absolute favorite characters of all time the raven get this out yeah featuring the betrayal at raven's court number the raven number nine Now, the Raven number nine, there's this photographer and a famous, back in those days, as in this comic, they had a famous photographer and a famous um, sort of model or what you want to call it. Um, and they obviously, they the photographer is going too fast. He crashes and the woman actually goes to Raven's court, gets help from the Raven. The Raven helps. Oh, mate. And in return, they get to look at the Raven's Court. But in return, the photographer nearly, he takes photos of where the Raven is at. He takes photos of what the Raven Court looks like and all the hidden package, passageways and all that sort of stuff. So the Raven eventually gets portrayed. Um, the photographer heals up, obviously. He gets portrayed. The photographer thinks he's going to be able to see these works being published. But yet again, we see the Raven's trusty little sidekick, the Raven himself, he basically scares the living daylights out of our mate, out of the photographer. He li- Levens scares the old pejeebas out of him and we go into the next issue which I think Raven 10 Raven number 10 Raven number 10 I think is the last issue of that series now I think Raven only had like 10 or 11 issues back in those days and what I've been reading what I've been seeing from the Raven is that I absolutely love it. Now we have the old ad, the good old old jokes, novelties ad that aren't probably worth that much nowadays. Probably not. Um, The Phantom, and we also have another ad. Now the Phantom Treasures of Dracon. I've actually got the board game and on, I think, Saturday... I think it may have been Saturday. We actually, I was showing you the board game a couple months ago that we did a unboxing of the board game. And let me tell you, we've been waiting for this phantom board game for what, three or two years since it first was going into, since the it was first going to plan. And it's now available at phantomcomic.com.au. Now at exclusive first print only at phantomcomic.com.au. Now we have another ad for from Giant Size Phantom number 16, trade paperback number four, The Treasures of Draken. The trade paperback goes hand in hand with the board game. And it has a new sequel, a new sequel to the old stories. And that sequel is written by, I think, Julie, let me get this right, Julie Dittrich, I think it is, um, and also art by Wendell Cavacanti. And you can get that 202 pages, full colour for 39 95 plus postage at phantomcomic.com.au or phone 0292618122. So if you enjoyed this, um, if you enjoyed this giant size phantom issue, if you enjoyed this review, please subscribe down below. Please leave a 
like, comment and share with your friends about these comics. The Phantom, I tell you, the Phantom is one of the first ever um, is one of the first ever Phantom characters. Is all already one of the first people that's been in tight spandex. It's one of the first ever created characters. It's one of the first ever superheroes. How much can you get better than that? If you would like to subscribe to the Phantom Cave YouTube channel, as I said before, you can do that down below. And as always, keep Phantom Caving, and we'll see you next time on the Phantom Cave.